I'll just say that I personally think it's more important to think of essential skills as the, the thinking and maybe some of the, the tools that will be relevant regardless of the specific APIs or platforms that you're working with. Hey devs, and welcome back to another episode of the Goobar Podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others to do the same. This week's episode is a question from a friend of the show, Benny, which is a great reminder that if you have a question or a topic that you'd like me to cover, feel free to send me a DM on social media, or you can send an email to podcast at goobar.dev and I will try and cover that in a future episode of the podcast. Now, today's question, like I said, comes in from Benny via Twitter, and the question reads a little something like this. Hey, Nate, how are you doing? I really like the podcast. Today, some topic comes to mind. I ask myself, what kinds of skills does an Android developer need in a modern project? Things like DI is needed, how deep should I dive into things like work manager or location manager? What are the pocket knife skills that I need to know? So first off, a big thank you to Benny for the kind words about the podcast. It is greatly appreciated. Now, I think to summarize this question and frame today's episode topic a little bit, it can be summarized along the lines of, what are the main skills needed for an Android developer today in 2021? So first off, I just want to frame this a little bit. I think this is a really good question, and I think it's really interesting for a couple of reasons. One is that there is an overwhelming amount of information out there for new developers, and honestly, even for seasoned developers. I think at this point, I feel comfortable that I'm a pretty adequate Android developer, and I constantly feel overwhelmed with all the new updates and trying to stay up to date with things. So I can only imagine what it's like for new devs that are trying to kind of get into the Android development community. And then secondly, I think this is challenging because there's not a single set of answers. There isn't going to be one sort of end-all be-all list of essential skills. Now, before we jump in to this, before I try and give you my list of essential skills, I'm gonna just try and expand on these last two points a little bit, try and give you a little bit more information around the context of this. So again, I mentioned that there is an overwhelming amount of info out there for developers. You know, there's, there's tons and tons out there. Updates are coming daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and on and on it goes. There's multiple solutions to almost everything. Tools are added, tools are deprecated. Google might come out and say one thing. People in the community might agree with that. People in the community might and often do disagree with that guidance. So where does this leave you? How do you know what the best solution is? What is the right way to do things? What are the essential skills? Who knows, honestly? Now, again, I said that there's not a single set of answers out there. Anyone that you ask this question to will be influenced by their own experiences, by their team's needs, by their personal interests, or by their, their personality or their temperament. The answer to the essential skills question is also going to depend on what experience level you're interested in. The essential day-to-day -day skills for a junior developer are going to look something different than those of maybe a staff level engineer on a team. And the team itself makes a difference. The skills required to be successful at a large enterprise company might be very different than those required to be successful at a fast-moving startup. So again, I, I just try to highlight these things to, to help frame this in the sense that the, the essential skills that I'm going to outline here shortly, they're not a definitive list. They're, they're my thoughts and opinions. They're going to depend on your situation and the teams you're looking at and, and a lot of different things. So I just want to try and keep that all in mind. 
So now that I've hopefully helped kind of illustrate the challenges of defining the essential Android developer skill set, and, and hopefully definitely validated the fact that this is a, a challenging sort of ecosystem to try and get into, or it's a challenging skill set to try and develop. Let's go ahead and take a, a best guess at trying to outline some of these essential skills. And again, this is going to be what I consider to be somewhat essential, not a definitive list. So for me personally, when I think of essential skills, I really kind of have to break these down into two separate categories. And for me, that's really non-Android specific things that I still think are very essential in the day-to-day -day work that I do and that I see my coworkers do. And then there are the Android specific things. And so just one last thing I wanna, I wanna preface here just one more time. When I say that these are essential, I'm not saying that you can't get a job without these skills. I'm saying that these are things that will help you be most productive in maybe your first role. So the more of these skills or the more of these concepts you're familiar with as you're looking for that first or second role, the easier you'll likely find it to get that job and to be successful in that job more quickly. So again, you don't have to have all of these things, but I think it's probably a good starting place. And it's, it's a list of things that I find useful fairly regularly. It's a list of things that I find my coworkers using and being comfortable with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that they will serve you well. So what are the non-Android specific skills that I think are essential? So first off, I'm gonna just say verbal communication. A huge part of my day-to-day -day work as a professional Android developer, whether it was my very first role or today, has always been being able to communicate ideas, being able to communicate the, the issues I'm having, being able to communicate my possible solutions for solving a problem or for building a feature. Being able to express your ideas verbally is very important. And the, the more comfortable you become at speaking up to ask questions, at speaking up to share your ideas and feedback, the, the easier it is to sort of become integrated in a team and the easier it is to, I think, be productive in your role. Now, similarly, I'm gonna list my second non-Android specific skill as being written communication. So very similarly to the verbal communication, being able to write down your ideas, being able to write up a document to define, let's say, a technical proposal or being able to write up uh, uh, repro steps for reproducing a bug from a crash report that comes in. These are really, really valuable things and they will be essential whether you're an Android developer or a web developer, a backend, whatever you're doing, uh, even outside of development. And these skills are just essential pretty much across any any profession especially when, when working in a team so again being able to verbally communicate and communicate in a written form are hugely important another skill that i think is pretty essential these days is source control so being familiar with the concepts of source control and being familiar with a source control tool now for most of us these days that's probably going to be git and then maybe GitHub as well as sort of an addition to that. So being able to sort of commit your code, push changes up to a repo somewhere, being able to ensure that you don't lose your work. I think this is essential. And the more comfortable you get with Git, I think the easier it is to be productive because you start to learn that it actually becomes very hard to lose work once you kind of know your way around the tool. And it gives you a greater sense of sort of comfort and confidence as you're doing your work. Now, the last uh, essential skill in the non-Android category that I want to list here is sort of a, it, it's more of a mindset, really. It's a, a mindset of being very proactive in what you do. And the, the way I like to think of this lately is, do you move towards solving a problem or are you more passive and do you wait for others to identify and fix an issue? You know, if you see something wrong, do you wait for others to tell you to fix it? Or do you just jump in and start fixing it or, or bring people together so you can figure out the right way to fix it? 
Are you moving towards solutions or are you letting solutions sort of build around you or come to you? I think being able to be very proactive and being a self-starter is huge because it will let you take on more interesting tasks. It'll let you get more done. It'll let people not have to micromanage you, which is usually a very desirable trait when you're working in a team. All right. So now we've gotten some of the non-Android essential skills out of the way. Let's talk about Android. Now, this is a hard list for me to generate, and I, I know that I'm going to hit finish on this recording and edit it and probably think of multiple things that I should have added or, or maybe find something that I wish I wouldn't have added to this list. So just know that this list is, is not definitive. It's not the, the end all be all, but it is a, a best sort of guess here at some things that I really do think are, are essential and that will serve you well to be comfortable with. So first up, if you're going to be an Android developer today, I think it's pretty essential that you be comfortable with either Java or Kotlin language fundamentals. I don't think that you have to be familiar with every little API or every standard library function or, or know the ins and outs of every advanced detail. Uh, I don't think that you need to be a pro with, let's say, coroutines or, or um, multi-threading uh, concepts, but you should be able to sit down and, and write code in Java or Kotlin. Now, I also think that you should be productive and comfortable in Android Studio. So you should be able to download Android Studio, install it on your machine, and sit down with it and, and build a project. Being able to understand how to create a new project, where to find your files, how to build the project with it, how to deploy from it. Having a basic sense of productivity within Android Studio is key. Now, the next step, once you sort of have the tooling and the language in mind, you want to be able to build an interactive UI. You want to be able to actually sit down and write a feature, write a screen, build a small app. So this is going to include things like how do you interact with your widgets? How do you define click listeners? How do you listen for swipes? How do you display some basic feedback to the user with toasts or snack bars? How do you uh, build a list and display that and interact with it? Again, this doesn't have to be super complex parts of UI. It doesn't, you don't have to be an expert on animations or really fancy transitions, but you should be able to sit down and build a basic app uh, within Android Studio and be able to interact with it. I also think that once you've built your simple app, you should be familiar with how to build that and deploy it to a device or emulator, which probably also means you should be comfortable with how to create an emulator. So we'll go ahead and we can add that as an extra item here, being able to create a new emulator. But you, you need to be able to deploy your app so you can actually test it, so you can share it with others, and etc. Now getting into more maybe Android specific concepts rather than the, the pragmatic day-to-day -day skills, I think the, the activity and fragment life cycles are really key. Uh, those are things that I feel like are always coming up for me, whether it's trying to fix bugs, whether it is reviewing code, having a good sense of the, the basic life cycle. Again, not everything, not every single complicated life cycle method of activities and fragments. I don't, I'm not talking about that, but the basics, you know, on, on create to on start to on resume and then, and then the reverse and, and fragments, you know, on create view, uh, destroy view, start, resume, etc. When should you be uh, registering to listen for events from your view models? When should you be cleaning up resources? Things like that. Uh, those are really important so that you don't uh, introduce memory leaks, so that you're not listening to events or doing work when your screen isn't uh, actually in view. Things like that become very important. Another concept I think is really good to have a basic understanding of is managing configuration changes. Uh, along with this, I think that would be sort of restoring state. So saving state, restoring state. What happens to your app when you rotate the device? What happens to your app when other configuration changes happening, like uh, changing the app language, for example, or going from light mode to dark mode? 
understanding some of those basic concepts, I think are really key. That then likely rolls into just the resource system in general. I think it's a really important thing to know how to define string resources, how to define dimension files, layouts, styles, themes. Where do these go? Uh, what are the qualifiers for these? How do you define a different layout for portrait mode versus landscape mode? Uh, having that familiarity of, of the resource system is something that comes up a lot, especially if you're doing feature development, UI development, uh, and, and then localization kind of stemming right from that. So being able to understand localization of string resources, how to localize those, how to use string resources so you aren't hard coding your strings into your app. That's another one that I think is very fundamental, especially if you're, if you're working in a team for, you know, um, may, maybe not really small startups that maybe aren't localizing yet, or maybe aren't localizing in many languages. But uh, I know at least at several of the companies I've worked for, we've been localized in, you know, 20 languages, 30 languages or more. And so being able to properly localize resources, organize them, and all of that becomes really valuable. Another skill here that I think is, is really important, maybe one of the more important skills on this list is being comfortable debugging your app. And, and debugging your app can mean a number of different things. It could mean just sort of following the logic of the application and ag adding log statements here and there to try and understand what's going on looking at Logcat. It could also mean understanding how to actually use Android Studio's built-in debugger tools and setting breakpoints and stepping over execution, stepping into functions. You know, I think there's a spectrum there of debugging skills and, and tools that you can become familiar with. But the more you learn those, I guarantee you will start to feel much more productive over time, especially when you're trying to dig in and understand why something's crashing or trying to understand why something is maybe not crashing when you think it should be. So another, again, essential skill here is understanding how to avoid triggering an activity not responding dialogue in Android. And I think conceptually then, what is an activity not responding dialogue? What does that mean? How do you avoid them? Uh, that is a really important thing that is fundamental to Android. And right along with that then is the whole threading model of Android, understanding that there's a main thread that we don't want to block and that we need to move work onto a background thread. Those, that, is, that is key to building a, re a responsive, a functional app today. And so just kind of running along those lines, then more questions arise, like how do you do work on a background thread? How do you perform long running tasks in the background, like navigation or, or playing a song or downloading a large file? You might also then need to know how do you make a network request? How do you load an image resource from the network? How do you do all of these sort of resource intensive things that take a lot of time in a way that doesn't block the UI thread, that keeps the application responsive and is efficient from a resource standpoint? These are all really valuable things. Pretty much any app these days is going to need to have some type of interaction with the network. Once we load data from the network, we oftentimes want to save it or we might need to save some type of user profile information or, or settings or whatnot. So I think it's really important to be familiar with the concepts of sort of saving and retrieving data locally, what different kinds of data might you save. And then it's also a good idea to maybe be familiar with a couple of the API sets for doing so. So this could be uh, being comfortable using Room to save data into a SQLite database. This could be familiarity with shared preferences or data store for saving uh, key value pairs or maybe some settings or configuration type data that doesn't need to be in a full database. And again, I wanna say here that this doesn't mean you need to be familiar with all of these things. You don't need to be familiar with all the different sort of ORMs out there, all the different databases out there but having a familiarity with some of the general concepts of saving data, retrieving data, how to, how to do that in a way that doesn't block the UI thread again, 
Um, I think those concepts are really important. And then being familiar with one or two tools with which to carry out those concepts will be enough, I think, to sort of be in that essential category. And then uh, one last one here that isn't even on my list as I'm reading off here, but I thought of it as I was going, uh, permissions. I think permissions is another big one. Understanding the need for asking for permissions in the app, understanding the, the permissions flow. Uh, I think that is really important. Understanding how to make your app still functional and and interesting and useful, maybe if all the permissions aren't granted. I think that's another big one. And again, now just again off the top of my head, the idea of min SDK, target SDK, and compile SDK. I think those are important as well because those are going to come up immediately if you try to build a new app. And they're gonna come up again yearly as you're looking at how to best support the users you already have, how to best support new versions of Android that are coming down the pipe, how to take advantage of new APIs and new functionality. So again, that's something that being familiar with that general concept early on is going to serve you well as you continue on as an Android developer. So that was a, a decent sized list of things that I consider kind of essential from an Android developer space. Those are things that I'd be looking for if I was trying to hire a, a junior developer. Um, those are things that, like I've said, I, I have seen in, in my coworkers over the years and that I, I found in myself coming up regularly. So now I just wanna call out a few things that are great to know in the Android space, but that I wouldn't consider essential necessarily. So these are things like uh, Dagger and Hilt, for example. So those specific tools and APIs, to me, I wouldn't necessarily consider essential. The reason for that is because even the senior developers on the teams I've worked with struggle to know all the ins and outs of these. So while they're great to know, I, I don't think that they are absolute must knows. I think maybe having a better understanding of the concept of why Dagger and Hilt are useful might be getting close to that essential category, but again, probably wouldn't put it into the absolute essential uh, for me personally. Jetpack navigation is another one that I see people talking about. There's definitely a demand out there from people that want to know more about it. But again, just from my perspective, someone working in the industry and, and seeing teams not actually using navigation and production apps, at least large production apps, I wouldn't consider Jetpack navigation to be an essential skill. Um, and the same could kind of be said for, for Work Manager. It's a, it's a great tool. It serves a, a very good purpose, but there's also multiple ways of carrying out this idea of sort of scheduled background tasks. Um, so again, I'm going to be more interested in whether you know about why you would want to schedule background work and some of the different tools for doing so. And I'm going to be less concerned about whether you specifically know Work Manager. Um, testing, another one that uh, I, I think it's great to know if someone is interviewing with me and they can talk about testing, that's a huge sort of thumbs up for me. Um, it's definitely a point in their favor. I think it's a great topic to know about. But again, I'm not going to consider it an essential skill, especially at kind of the junior level. Again, just because a lot of teams aren't gonna be focused on testing anyways. A lot of you know senior developers aren't going to be super comfortable with testing and how to write effective tests or, or TDD or anything like that. So again, for me, it falls under the category of great to know, but not essential. And then uh, two kind of big ones here at the end that I'm gonna tack on mostly because I just want to, again, call out that there's a difference between things that get talked about a lot and things that are actually essential. So Jetpack Compose and Kotlin Multiplatform, both of these are talked about a lot in the Android developer ecosystem right now. A lot of conversations from uh, JetBrains and Google about these topics, whether it be Google I.O. or the Kotlin 1.5 release event or blog posts or YouTube videos, a lot of a lot of content coming out about these. But for me, absolutely not essential. Uh, I think that 
both of these are really cool technologies and you know jetpack compose especially i i think will have a very strong place in the android ecosystem but again it's not something that most teams are going to be using anytime soon even if they are using it it's probably going to be in a very limited capacity for a while as you know all the existing views are still going to be in xml so this is something that, again, I wouldn't put pressure on yourself to feel like you have to know Compose today. In fact, if you're a junior developer that is familiar with Compose and you're going in to interview with a team, there's a decent chance that you're probably going to know more about Compose than the people you're interviewing with. Um, so just something to keep in mind that even though something is talked about a lot in the community, doesn't mean that it's actually an essential skill. All right, so that is a lot of me talking about my thoughts on what is essential, what's maybe not essential. To summarize, I'll just say that I personally think it's more important to think of essential skills as the, the thinking and maybe some of the, the tools that will be relevant regardless of the specific APIs or platforms that you're working with. You know, specific APIs come and go, libraries are constantly evolving, but underlying fundamentals of the Android operating system, for example, those are gonna stay the same. Understanding concepts and their nuances independent of a specific tool, those are really valuable in the long run. So for example, understanding multi-threading programming and the need for using multiple threads, the need for not spawning a new thread for every single background task. These kinds of things are really important to understand regardless of whether you are solving this problem using RxJava or coroutines or uh, basic Java threads and executors. So again, kind of the, the concepts there are really essential. The specific tools maybe are not so essential. So if you're trying to understand then what is essential today to get a job, I will try and summarize it into maybe two points here. So the first point or the first maybe piece of advice I'll say is to develop a good understanding of the fundamental concepts and challenges of Android development today. So a few examples of these kinds of concepts and challenges might be uh, device fragmentation. It could be multi-threading. It could be the concept of building UI that adapts to different screen sizes or how to perform long running background tasks. These are some of the things that are sort of just always going to be relevant and are always going to be challenges. And then similarly, the second point here I will suggest is to develop proficiency with any combination of tools that you can to develop quality functional applications. So again, just an example, if I'm hiring someone, I am less concerned about whether you use threads or RxJava or coroutines as I am whether your application doesn't block the UI thread, whether your uh, application code is organized in a way that makes sense and looks like it'd be easy to maintain. That's more important to me than whether you used MVP or MVVM or MVI. So develop kind of your toolbox, develop your set of skills that you're comfortable with. You could sit down and build an application and then understand the concepts that you're sort of building on top. Those things will serve you really well. And I think those are the essential things more so than whether you use Dagger2 or, or Hilt in building your application. So hopefully this has been a helpful look into essential skills. Hopefully it's been maybe an interesting look at least of my thoughts on uh, what is maybe essential and not essential. If you enjoyed the podcast, leave us a like or share with your friends. It really helps support uh, the podcast and the YouTube channel. As always, thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you all in the next episode.